All right. Yeah. We'll call the uh, work session, city council work session to order. Can I get the approval of the agenda, please? I'll make that motion. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay. So, old business. Public works update. Christina provided everybody with us. Well, I emailed it. I emailed it to the board too, but I printed a bunch of them off just because I I didn't know if I was going to get it to you guys in time. So there's just so much information that's been going on in the last couple of weeks. This was thank you for getting it out to you guys. So um, just real quick. Uh, I have not been able to get in touch with Angela Lockaboy from the USDA. She's out until the 22nd. So there's a couple of these points I can't completely clarify, but I do know August 9th, um, there'll be some uh, documents at the council packet. So just to recap, um, we're in stage three of the USDA, USDA documents, which means uh, the plans and specs for the facility have been approved by the feds. Um, the city has submitted an updated disclosure of obligation statement for the city's or for the city's bond sale because we obviously will be bonding for this money if it moves forward. Up. Um, and then in tandem with that, Ellers is preparing loan closing documents. So I'm saying you'll probably see something on your in your packet for August 9th, but I might be mistaken. It just I haven't confirmed some of those with Angela, but that's my understanding of the timeline. If that is the truth, then um, the city could go advertise for bonding sometime in September. Okay. At which point then the process will just continue. We'll see what that comes out to, if it comes out to anything you know feasible and within budget, then the city at that point can still continue the process. Please keep in mind at any point that ends up being exceeding the budget that we agreed to, the city has the opportunity to back out. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Actually, I, I, I do have this email. Um, if uh, we don't hear from Christine, from Angela. Angela. <laughs> Can we still move forward? Oh, we'll move. We'll hear from her. So she's only out this evening. All right. So some of these details, Jason, are just um, confirmation of closing documents to the ninth. If there's any other of the stage three documents that are being worked on and haven't been completed, I'll know at that time. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. John, you were going to say something? Yeah. Uh, so this. We were waiting for the USDA mm -hmm. and we finally heard back. Yep, we heard back that they approved the plans and specs of the building. Okay. Yep. Right. That was a big hurdle. That was one of those things that took anywhere from four to five weeks. That's what we are always That was the big long one okay. that we were waiting on. All right. Yes, Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any update on the liquor store? Yeah, we're on, we're just on plan. So. Going steady by jerks. We're still all making all deadlines, all that good stuff. Yep. We've just, there's, you know, there's still some gaps in production in certain things, but we're working around that. Any questions for Donna? Or have they reported anything to you, Christina? Or no. Any headache or? Um, Sean is spot on. There's some things that have been um, creating some some timing issues, flooring supplies. Um, we've ordered racking. Racking's out a little bit longer. A lot of that is, um, you know, supply chain issues. Where originally. Racking will only take four to six weeks, it's now taking 10. 
but those things are unordered. So hopefully that stuff will follow through into place um, as the as the building progresses. The firewall is completely done. Interior building all the way up to all the way up to the roof. So they'll be able to start working on closing that up just in time. Yeah, I had my hand up on the public works end of it. Oh, oh and, uh, and, and so I don't think the majority of the town knows what's going on there. So you're you're thinking about a new building all together for the police department and this building. No, no public works. Just public works. Nothing to do with city. Nothing to do with city hall. No, sir. So this is gonna see. Yes, sir. Okay. And what will happen with the public works building down there? Hoping to sell it, and this is out here on the yeah, sorry, the golf course at the end of industrial. And what's the cost on that? One point one, one point three, all serviceable debt to the city, correct? No grants, all serviceable debt. At an interest rate of two, I don't have it in front of me, but it's about two percent. Over 20, 30? 30. Nice. And what's going to go in this building now? To be clear, to be clear I think we own two pickups, a grader. A backhoe. What else would go in there, Mike? Oh, uh, like you said, the two pickups, the grader, the backhoe, the skid steer, skid steer attachments, Crazy. generator. Oh, what else would be oh, put in there? Street sweeper. Yeah, the sweeper. Everything that we own instead of stuff being parked outside. For 1.1. Is the old lumber yard in the corner still being used? It is. And what do you have sitting outside at this point? Uh, sitting outside currently right now uh, would be the street sweeper is outside. <clears throat> the dump truck is currently outside, as well as the trailer. Street sweeper is a gift, am I not correct on that? Yes. That's a drag on the city. We put a fair amount of money into it. Exactly. Do you know what interest is on 1.1, you guys? Do you know what that's going to cost? Because I do. I, I borrowed over a million before, so I know. For limited use, <clears throat> not very responsible for. Town members here. Very poor. On top of a six hundred thousand and fifty, six hundred and fifty thousand dollar addition to a liquor store that barely carries its own weight. That is actually carrying their own weight. Barely. They're the ones that obtain it. But yes, we do appreciate your opinion. Barely. No, it's not opinion. That is fact down there. That's black and white. That's not opinion. Barely covers itself. Again, thank you for your opinion. Do you have anything else? From the liquor store? No. <laughs> Uh, Christina, the local sales tax, you just want us to go off of what you sent us, or do we want to cover each one of these? No, I'll, I'll cover them okay. because not everybody has a copy. Um, local sales tax campaign with Seth is still compiling information for the campaign. Uh, they're reaching out to other municipalities 
that have recently had a half or a percent sales tax approved in the last couple of years to help out with that. So I, I don't have any additional to present to you guys. Just a lot of questions. Okay. And we'll still be on deadline for next year. Oh yeah, we have we have plenty of time. Okay. Nick, anything from? Yeah. Oh, all right. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> what's the local the sales tax campaign for? It's I'm not to help her infrastructure. If we gain a half percent sales tax at city. We can run anywhere from fifty to thirty thousand dollars. I'm sorry, thirty to fifty thousand dollars in revenue that can go into schools and infrastructure and can help. And so sales tax, just so I'm clear, would be anytime you bought anything in mm -hmm. the city of Black that right. you have to pay that extra sales tax. Yeah, or any of our visitors that come to it, obviously. So, and I don't know anything about city or budgets or how money works, but <clears throat> we're going to tax everybody in the city for thirty to 50000 but then we're going to borrow a million dollars to build a building. Why don't we maybe just put some of that money <laughs> instead of putting a sales tax? Why don't we continue to borrow money to fix the streets instead of? So we're going to have the liquor store loan. We're going to have a city building loan, and then we're going to sales tax everybody on top of it to fix the streets. So, so the city has assessment policies and policies that it has in order to go off of in order to pay for certain infrastructure and. and there's certain ways that we have to do it. So there's certain money, obviously. Yes. I, I clearly, obviously, don't understand. That's why I'm asking questions. I'm probably I'm just a you know, little bit more to a lot of a conversation I could have at this point. Right. But there are certain pockets of money and ways to get them that are allowed to pay for certain things. Yeah. A half percent sales tax can help more than just streets and infrastructure. However, it can help for um, it can help for parks. It can help for other types of entities that assist the city, our campground, improve our, our walking trail, things of that nature. For instance, the county has a half percent sales tax that's for streets and roads. The first year it was using that money, they did County Road 30 all the way through town and a good portion of the new show too. I'm not trying to drum up bad memories or nightmares for some people like me, but that was a good portion of that money the first go around was used in this town and in this area. What, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the city has complete control over choosing how they, if they were to collect this percent, whatever it is, they have to sit, they decide how it can be spent as far as where it can be allocated or apportioned. The city has to have the voters approve it after right. the legislature I mean, does, but they have to present to the, a, to the voters a, a, a guideline right. saying that correct. It's how it's going to be spent. Right. That is correct. Yes, yeah. right. But they have. The, and the voters have to approve it. You can endorse it, but the voters have to approve that it. That is absolutely correct. And if if everybody understands that when they go to Bemidji and spend money in Bemidji, they're paying the city sales tax in the town of Bemidji too every single time. It's 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 unfortunately it's a common it's become a commonality in the world we live in. We generate more and more tax dollars. So that we can pay more and more tax, so we get more and more services. So, you know, it's, that's what we do nowadays. So, we just pay for tax. But, um, but it's something that I think Christina did make some reference to the idea that it's not just the citizens of Blackfoot, it's anybody that spends money in the town of Blackfoot that would be paying into that. So, the high volume of tourist trade that we do see in our community through fishing, hunting, and other activities, those dollars would stay in the, in the town as well. That is that is very spot on, Dwight. In addition to that, and not that it I'm also endorsing goes, it, but I'm saying no. Nope, but it also goes off of your zip code. So if you're and if your cart in Amazon is full, 
and you're paying sales tax there, that half percent goes off of that too. So for instance, the city of International Falls just passed their 1% in the 2020, I believe that's right, or the 18 election, one of them. And in their first year, they exceeded their expectations of what they were gonna take in on their 1% sales tax revenue solely because of COVID. And everybody started ordering online. And, and it's unfortunate the borders are closed for them, but they've exceeded what their expect what their first year expected revenue was. So it has a, a very good benefit to the city if it does pass. At, at, at a cost, though. At a cost. At, at a cost, cost to the city. But, Absolutely. But that's not totally true by zip code, it's by physical location. So it can be the boundary. So, uh, so, it, 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 you, so it depends on where it's taken possession at. So you could have a block yeah. to address with a green not living. That's a good clarification. Right. I mean, I, would agree. I, I don't, I have a block to zip code, but I do not live in the right. town of Black. Right. So anybody so shopping at your store would well. be exempt from the yeah. half percent. Yeah. Yeah. But if I were delivering into the city. But if I ordered at my office, we would which is in the city, then that, that yeah. sales tax is likely to yeah. go through the city. Oh. So I'll make all of my orders at my office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 No, but I mean, and I think that's true to your online ordering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as no new updates to the kitchen yet. Yeah. Wouldn't try to hold your breath. <laughs> you want us to take it off? Hold it in this land? Or do you mean this? I'm thinking with the, up, with the upcoming stuff that's going on with the library. Around the train. With the union, I guess. Next. Tim, I have a question. Um, I think it was months ago or so, a few weeks ago, uh, the county board had a, a meeting with uh, the Michigan City Council. And uh, one of our, our topics was the uh, library and, and how they have so much money that, uh, hmm. that you know, some, some people are having. Uh, some heated discussions over what to do with it. So I'm just kind of curious, um, and I'm sure that you guys are might be in the same position where where I uh, have some, some money where, I mean, from what I understand that it can only be spent on certain things. And uh, yeah. If, so, yeah, if it was, Nick, you probably, if you attend the meetings, you would know better than anybody we, else in the room. For anything for the community, Regarding the library, and I can't so it was like update or something to do with building updating or books or could be for more bigger pay or whatever. But that money would be have to be used for the library or public. And, and are you having any uh, uh, issues with how you're going to spend it? Oh, ours was a very small fraction compared to the books. Yeah, <laughs> what was. Well, $63,000, but that's yeah. a lot for us. I mean, a game changer for yes. our library. But it doesn't sound like they want to let go of it. Yeah. Did the, 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 well, uh, Commissioner Olson is, is uh, uh, the county is uh, uh, appointed to, to the library. From what I understand, uh, uh, the commissioners are the budget committee. And, uh, and, um, you know they're, they're really unsure because you know that they're that the commissioners and city council appointees really really don't agree <laughs> on something so, so i'm just kind of curious how how, how it was working out for you guys we haven't seen anything of it kind of at a standstill yeah. and the community held a, a an open forum with the live local library board and you know seeing community members that were interested in you know, seeing what we could brainstorm to use the funding for prior to it going to this, you know, finance board. Does the bookmobile still come up here? It does. Oh, it does come up here. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yep, I see it drive by twice a week, twice a week. And we were told it doesn't come up here. <clears throat> 
I'm not close by the city. But is it delivering oh, more? Squalic. Squalic, yeah. I don't think it comes here. Oh, maybe it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, okay. It's yeah. I think we can take that off of our agenda until okay. Nick says until he's got something else to report on. Okay. That's I think that makes sense. Okay. Because it could be end of the year or even beginning of who knows. And do we have anything new about the American Rescue? Uh, no, and I apologize. I apologize to the council. <laughs> I was supposed to have that um, that lost revenue calculation for the council by now, and I don't have it. Um, I haven't seen the 21 funding, but I have heard from a few sources that the county received their funding. Um, but that's as far as I know to date. I haven't seen the first half of the municipality's funding. And I still don't know what that exact number is yet either. Right. And I actually, besides Tim, I actually spoke with um, Commissioner Gosvig too, and I still reiterated um, how I'd like to partner with the other municipalities in the county with how the money's being spent so that we don't have overlapping. And we're using our money the best we can for our city. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we need to get we need to get back here this evening. Uh Commissioner Gosling? Yeah, uh Tom Barry was who I actually reached out to. He's oh, the okay. county administrator. But no, I don't have a time right on that. All right. But I'm sure Tim will take that back, right? Yeah. Well, happy to. <laughs> on the stump jumpers parking lot. So as the council may recall at the July council meeting, they have uh, approved that purchase agreement for the parking lot ownership. So I'm working on the closing date. Um, <coughs> I don't have an exact date right now. Staff retitles kind of about two or three weeks in processes of closing loans. So it could happen by the end of this month, but it might not first part of August. So I still have to get in touch with the president of the Smallville Club to let them know. But until we get to that point, I'm going to keep this on the agenda. Uh, as far as the flag, the drop box was concerned, mm -hmm. the confusion was whether it was an interior or exterior. Mm -hmm. They only make one. Oh. So, right. so they're both the same. That's basically the long and the short of what I got. So, so can, the costs that were that would there be, are still the same. It would be the same. I'll put that back on your August. Yep, I, I called the representative from the company and I asked what the difference were. There are no. So that would explain why they sent the one. Good enough. <clears throat> Just watch that. Uh, the board asked for this to remain on the old business, so I don't know what more you'd like to review or discuss at this point. Mike might have some input. I'm not sure. No, I, I don't know where this stands either. I don't know. I don't recall who brought it up or what is going on with. I brought it up, but with the overwhelming um, level of uh, I don't want to do it, I figured we would just take it off. Can I ask a question, Barb? Yeah, go ahead and see. What was the plan? We, I was just going to ask uh, to look into possibly getting a small slash pad for the kids to slash around and just for something else to do for the kids. Like at Wayside? Correct. And I'm not sure what uh, that is. Is it like a plastic match or something, or is it just a yard thing? Concrete slab oh. with water jets. Rubber, the, the rubber padding. Yeah. Okay. Um, just something you know, fun to do for energy. What would something like that cost? I think it was between five thousand to a hundred thousand. 
Somewhere in there. Yeah, well, it, it, really, it really depends on what <laughs> you want to build. I mean, it's, I mean, it's ballpark. I mean, who wants to build about five hundred thousand or hundred thousand dollars? No one. You just but you, but you could. You could, yes, okay. potentially. And then, okay. But yeah, it, it all based from what I understood, it was uh, it all under um, the prices on the, the, the water holding tank, how much concrete you're going to put in, the, the jets, and all the other manpower and everything. So, whatever. I mean, it's like I said, I thought it would be something fun for the kids to do besides having a playground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the library sponsor. Public library splash pad. Sixty-three thousand. Have some books there. They could check out some books. <laughs> 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 I was gone. The guys did, however, get uh, the playground stuff updated down at Wayside and out at Pine Tree Park. Uh, I've got a little issue with uh, the material that was dropped off for the inside not being quite what I thought or was made to believe it was. So I've got some phone calls to make now that I'm back and get that figured out. But yes, the, the fence came down, the new surround got put up and Got some new material inside, and we can just keep chipping away at making those parks better for the kids in town. Yeah, the wayside can be used a lot more since we go drive by there anytime, day, late evening. There's kids playing there more now than there mm -hmm. than there were a lot before. Yep. Hopefully, eventually, we'll be able to continue expanding with what's down there. What was the Problem with the material, if I can ask. Uh, what we ended up getting, or what they brought, was more of just a, it's really almost just a plain pine wood chip, is all it is. And my understanding when I was talking with uh, the fella on the phone there is that it was actually more of a rubberized, synthetic, engineered product that a lot of the playgrounds and stuff are going to now. So, okay. We're quite a bit off on the materials. It's not like it's close. So I, I got to sit down and figure it out. Like I said, I was gone all last week. I just got back midday today. So I'm trying to do some catch up. Well, of course, financial revenue fund classification. Okay. Um, a lot of information that just made a lot more sense to me to just draw all my notes down to you guys. So, um, a lot of conversation in the last few weeks about um, the golf course, this parks and Re recreation department, um, questions about changing the designation of the golf course. So, I had a very long conversation with our um, auditor from Miller McDonald. And I'd like to just report a couple of points of information. So as it pertains to the golf course fund and how it operates, um, if the city wishes to change the designation of the golf course from the enterprise fund, which is like a business fund, to what um, the state refers to as a special revenue fund, it would just require a, a simple action by resolution. Um, once that action is complete, the golf course fund, in the view of the state and how our financial records are, would act pretty much as it does now. Um, it would still have an annual revenue and operating budget. However, its purpose as a special revenue fund would make it so it wouldn't necessarily need to make a profit in the eyes of the state. I could use a comparison as we have a fund for a cemetery. We don't always make a profit, 
but it is of use to the city and community to have it. Okay, it has an operating and revenue budget. Any questions so far? Um, so how does this affect the fund as it sits currently? Because I'm sure most people's questions. Internally, the accounting process that the city does right now, it would still remain the same. We still create a revenue budget, what we project to make in one year, what we expect to make after using expenditures to pay all the whole money rent. Um, I would still provide to the city income statements if it chooses so that the council can see how it's doing. <coughs> the fund could still have a reserve fund if it wishes for capital improvements if the city chose. If the fund were to make a profit in the future, it would not need to return its designation to an enterprise fund unless the city decided to. Totally up to them. In regards to the current negative cash balance, the city's choice to return this and the city's choice to return the debt the liquor store is currently covering. I just want to make a couple of points. Um, the city can allow the negative cash balance to remain and fulfill the repayment when the fund goes <laughs> allows it to start paying that back. That's how the resolution states right now, and that's how it currently is. Or if the city chose to move to a special revenue fund, it could write that debt off. But at that point, the amount of that negative cash balance would need to be transferred from the liquor fund to the Gulf current fund in order to make it whole. So if the liquor fund had $250,000 in it and the negative cash balance of the Gulf course was $150,000, then you figure out the math, how much would be left in the liquor fund at that time? I report those cash balances to you monthly. Um, moving on, um, the city can choose to change the designation of the golf course fund regardless if it chooses to start this parks and rec department conversation. It doesn't necessarily need to have it under that. However, if you did choose to form a parks and rec department, um, as it pertains to the city council's questions, I would like to make a couple of things for you guys to consider. Um, this parks and rec department could have all special revenue funds placed underneath it, which could include the cemetery, the wayside rest park, pine tree park, campground, and the golf course, all entailed under one. By doing so, the city serves the public with this department for the good of the community. This is the significance of the special revenue fund, not an enterprise fund. The funds have their own revenue stream and operating budgets to fund themselves without needing to make a profit, but they still could. Many cities have these. <clears throat> Lots of them have things that cash flow and make a profit. A lot of them don't. Um, I did a little bit more digging. Um, if you wanted to combine all the special revenue funds, it provides an easier presentation to the community for future bonding or levy action. So it's it, it's a little easier sell to your taxpayers for saying, you know, all of this funding that we're gonna bond for to make a splash pad is gonna be supported by the parks and rec department. One of the questions kept coming back to me is if we formed a parks and rec department, would that assist in the city of acquiring more grants? So our auditor couldn't really confirm if that would be true or not. Um, he suggested we do a little bit more research. It could have more options. The state has the Parks and Trails Legacy Grant Program through the DNR. Um, you have to be designated, much like Big Falls is, and a couple others in the state. And that's when you can get legacy funds. This is going to require a little bit more research before I can report back to you. I have some more comments about the management of the golf course and organizing <coughs> it, organizing it if on a personnel level if it chose to change under a parks and rec department. And I know that goes down here below, but they're a little unrelated to the special revenue fund and enterprise fund conversations. So I just want to hold off on that in case you guys have questions. No, I guess I, I think it's a pretty good idea. So it, it, it just seems like it's more transparent. 
<coughs> well, special revenue. One of the comments I keep getting back from the public is, you know, the golf course used to always make money, it could move its money around, which is fine. That's what a city can do. Um, but as soon as it loses money, everybody's like, well, you know, why can't we do? Why is it losing money? This is not good. And I'm like, well, yes, it's looked down right now as a business. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to close. And that's been feedback in the past, too. I mean, the cemetery doesn't make money and we don't close it, right? So it's for the good of the community. And that's what the public should be looking at the golf course at. And you heard all the feedback not even an hour ago. Or, uh, uh, excuse me, Mantry Park? It does. It is considered a special revenue fund. So that's, that's in the black. Does that count the money you received from the timber sale program to the county? Con -con? Is that con -con? No, that's not con. -con. That's timber sale. Part of the timber sale, when we buy timber sale at the level, then we'll know this. Part of that comes up to Pine Park. I follow you now. Yes, that's including the contribution from the county. And what was that last year? 11000 Quite a bit of money. Mike, on your opinion, excuse me, uh, on your opinion, Mike, is this still something you want to move forward with? It's totally your guys. I know, but I don't, this is going to be, you know, if, if you don't want to do this, you know, we're, you got to look at you for your recommendation as well. I mean, we're only talking about moving this from a special revenue fund to an sure. enterprise fund at this point. I don't see anything Correct. that involves your Correct. staff. No, this is just a, an accounting right. thing at this point. And that's where I would, uh, I would recommend that we do that. I think it'd be great to have everything together. You know, like you say, if you know, you put all all the parks together, is that area and you know, all the parks so together? That, yeah, and then we can just, you know, I mean, you know, we're gonna we're we're, we're supporting the golf course, so we're not waste time. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> if they're all supporting each other. And they're all parks. They should all be together. So if you say that you can still transfer money if you switch it, you can still transfer money from the group to help out. Mm -hmm. you, so that doesn't really change. No, it does not. So no, it's only in the designation in the eyes of the state auditor. To me, it's a no-brainer. Those guys kind of like it. So <clears throat> if I Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, actually, um, so like I mentioned, I got an email yesterday, and so I just finally heard about this um, about the whole golf course thing. So I spent most of my day trying to make calls and figure out, you know, how I can help <laughs> because I want to help. Um, but there, there was a couple of options that I thought about in a discussion with a couple of people from the Philip Conference. Uh, which unfortunately black doesn't black that doesn't qualify for because of the geographic location. Um, but I was thinking about the, the county development fund, and I'm not too sure how how uh, this, this reclass reclassification might help or might not help. But I know a few years ago uh, the city applied for some bridge repair, I believe, or uh, for the golf course. And uh, at that time, uh, my colleagues really worked in favor in the way that uh, money is divvied up in the, in the CONCON or in the development fund. Let's say that there was a uh, uh, $10,000 request and uh, I supported the whole 10,000 and the others didn't support any. So then it would be uh, 2,000 would, would be uh, allocated to that project. So I, I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe there's a way that I can try to do that there again, try to help out, uh, you know, the golf course in, in the city. Um, it's it's going to take some some uh, 
talking with, with my colleagues to try to you know, bump that bump, bump it up or or if there is a request that uh, the uh, Jody is out the architecture treasurer for a couple of days so I, mean, I couldn't really uh, get a lot of uh, information on how we could do that or if we could do it because um, myself and, and, and uh, the county board know that uh, uh, Black Duck is in a, a unique position uh, you know being too far south of the Philadelphia Con and too far north from Bemidji, where a lot of, you know, a lot of services and, and things like that, um, where, where, where they get all the money. So it's my job as, as, as the county commissioner to really advocate for, for our area. And, uh, you know, and I try to do that on, on the board. Um, so I was trying to think of maybe if, if there is some sort of reclassification on, on, on how we can distribute funds, you know, maybe maybe we can help there. Um, and also, one of the uh, CONCOM members asked if, it, if we can possibly do a uh, one-time funding uh, grant to to the city or to the golf course to, to help out. Um, you know, there was a similar situation with. with uh, See, a lot of uh, a lot of that, that money is supposed to stay in the designated area, but we made a one-time contribution to the uh, the veterans' home in Bemidji, mm -hmm. and and that's not in in the designated area. So um, I'm hoping to talk to Joey and get a little clarification there and see you know can can we make a, a one-time contribution because like, as I mentioned, um, a lot of the area you know the Conkan Phil Conkan. Really does um, uh, benefit you know, from from the black duck area. So I mean, uh, um, just to let you guys know that you know, I'm trying to work, you know, with uh, you know, my partners and, and trying to figure out a way to, to help out. You know, you know maybe I'll, I'll keep in contact with Christina and see what we can do. Uh, you know, if we can, I just want to let you know that. Okay. I can do. Sorry, and maybe I'm off topic because you're talking about just the financial structure of it. But if you did switch this over to the parks and rec, would you form a like we have the golf course board, just the golf course? Would there be any type of? Am I stepping on one? Okay. Would would it restructure something so that there's a different board for parks and recs, or if would it be a combination? Am I? Too far ahead of myself. Are you guys ready for me to move on with some of my other statements? It's a couple down. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Are you good with that? On the next page. Okay. Okay. So let's just assume for the sake of argument that the city chose to fire the department. Okay. Structurally and organizationally, there would be lots of other elements to this, you know. Where the payroll goes, who's in charge of it? Um, do we hire somebody else? Is it another board? That type of thing. Um, historically, if we just look at the golf course, a long time ago, it was only run by members, a golf board. It had staff, but they ran it. And early, two, early 2010, you know, the city chose to change that organizational structure, get rid of the golf board, hire one person to oversee the entire entity, a seasonal person, which, you know, it's not working, right? Um, since then, we've tried to bring the golf board back, mix it up with staff and members and, you know, volunteers. We hired another person to split that responsibility up out to the golf course to, to run it, but on a personnel structure, it doesn't appear to be working. Regardless of who's in the role, it's not working because it's seasonal. And we don't have, in my opinion, enough input from the membership, the people that are playing. It's, it's no question that in the last three weeks, we've gotten tremendous output from the community and the members and the people that are playing golf that, you know, have some fantastic ideas on how to get the self force working better and earning some more money. <coughs> um, 
on an organizational standpoint, I did look at Don Jordan suggested going to Kegema. I looked at least the city of Grand Rapids and the Kegema's golf course to see how their city or their city's organizational chart looks. And they have a golf board that is all members that answers and works directly with one golf board director or golf golf director is what they call the person, manager, whatever, they call them a director. And then they <clears throat> report to the council. That director hires all the staff, promotes the, the golf course, you know, manages all funding, and then answers up. Um, I would be in favor of recommending that, you know, we either work with the personnel committee or the existing golf board we have in the members and try to look at refreshing what we're doing right now and seriously consider hiring one very strong individual that can fill that role. Year round. Year round, yes. Oh, did I not say that? No, year, no, round. year round. Not seasonal. Thank you, Dwight. <laughs> I think I had it in my head, it just didn't come out. I suggested we before that we should hire somebody and get a man. You know, we, we need to open the golf course earlier. We can't open in June, you know, or maybe you know, we need to open it. What I used to golf, we first thing we want to do is get out there and golf right away as soon as the green the keys are ready. You know, I mean. As soon as they're, you can walk on them, they're safe to walk on, you want to be out there golfing. So we need somebody to, to manage that place and first start promoting it mm -hmm. when there's snow on the ground. I mean, it's like you say, somebody strong and wants it to work. Mm -hmm. I think currently the way it's working, even though the city's doing its best with having the public works department in the administrative department overseeing some of the entities to make sure it's running smoothly is there's still so much gap between and there's so much knowledge gap and communication gap between those entities that that's what's really holding us back at getting this entity to really work good for the city and it, it's everywhere else you go they have somebody that's working to promote and take care of that golf course all year round you may not get your staff back until the first part of April, but you have at least one very strong individual that can do it all year. I mean, Sandy Anderson had a very valid point at one of the board meetings that in February, her golf course, Arizona, mm -hmm. she said, in February, they have all of their tournaments booked on their calendar already and, you know, fish fries or whatever they're doing to promote it. So whatever you're doing, you know, which goes coincides with our chamber initiative and, you know, that type of stuff. You know, it's a great point, Christina. hundred percent, I agree with you 100%. And I, I don't think it's anything to do with the city. I think the city is doing fine out there in that aspect. The problem is, is nobody wanted to have tournaments. You know, I golf out there, and I didn't know that course was down to 10 carts. I would have been raising hell a long time ago. But I have my own cart, so it doesn't bother me. I go out my golf. To me, it's like having a bakery without having a can of sugar there. What happened up here was ridiculous. But that's water under the bridge at this point. You made the you made the starting point tonight to get this thing rolling. But the trouble is, it doesn't matter if Mike's running or Jim's running or Pam's running or you're running under. Missing run. It doesn't matter. It's going to take time to get those tournaments back because what's happened now is you've lost those tournaments over the years, and until they get pissed off somewhere else, they're not coming back because they're already gone. So, because there's a reason why they left out there because they got mad. So, when they leave the next one, maybe we can get them back. And you know, like the classic one, the one she mentioned today, that there's no reason that wasn't out here. But with 10 cards, doesn't work. So your investment on these cards is that you're going to take some time. This isn't good. Don't plan on August being full up there because it didn't happen. But the future is what you got to work on and trying to get some of these back. And I think Pam and Jim will, will try to get some of these back. And Pam was trying to keep them. You can't keep them with a the little bit you've got there. But 
I don't blame the city for 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 that. Yeah. I blame them for the managers that were sitting here that didn't that allowed the cart after cart to leave and not replace them. Like I said, I don't know. There's only ten cars out there that have been held here a long time ago, but we just didn't know it. You know, I didn't know it as a number. I had been in here a long time ago. I've, I've often wondered why we why we're losing these tournaments and why people are going to castles. And, and I don't think a lot of members knew it. I don't think anybody. Really I don't know. think they did either until I don't think so. the meetings started getting heated. Actually, since the RV park came up, that's really when it. That's only a month ago. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, you're, you're right. right. You're right, Don. You know, you're right, Don. I golf out there a couple times a week, and I, I didn't. And I will promise you, if I had known there was only ten cars out there, you would have heard from me a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting here one day, and all of a sudden we had a meeting, and I was like, "Hey, talking about RV park." I go, "Where were that? Well, I didn't know you know nothing about it. No, where is that going?" Yeah. Oh, Chris, did it back to me? Or were you talking about this manager position? And like with the rerouting of everything and doing like a different board or not board or whatever you would do. And like I were able to help the golf course financially because now, you know, this just trying to get the carts was a big debate and spending the money just to get the carts was a big debate. Where will you get the money to pay a salary for a manager year round? Oh, we just I mean, discussed that we don't care about making money at the golf course. So we don't care about spending sixty thousand dollars for a new person for a position as long as they have the hope and the premises. Of but now we can use that eleven thousand dollars because we're going to be learning parts of rec, so that's going to help too, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that's four after. Yeah, I no, that's that's very poor. Yeah, we don't. That's guys, very, 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 very poor, dude. No, yeah, that's, that's true. Like that. It's true. Thing. No, that's not true. That's four after. No, shorter. Yeah, that makes personal. Well, the thing Here's is, the topic. If, um, if you hire a full time manager, you're also allowing for the promotion and the opportunity for growth by having that person there that you have not had. And if it's as bad as it's, you guys say it is, you're only going to go better. It's only going to get better. It's not going to continue to get worse. And that's going to help raise the, the level of use of that course. I was have, wondering how you, you guarantee have, a salary. Oh, I'm just asking I'm questions. Right. I don't I mean, understand. I mean, I'm a, everybody knows that I'm a big baseball fan. Baseball teams don't shut down six months out of the year. Their promotion department is working 12 months out of the year, so that six months that they have the product on the field, they're prepared for those six months. You can't expect a, a, a business to run that's a six-month business to only be operating for six months. All these resorts that are seasonal, they don't stop promoting the resort during the winter. They're promoting it year round. You know, uh, there's seasonal times for the lumber business and, and Northwoods Lumber doesn't stop selling lumber because they can't dig the foundation if they're doing all that stuff, getting that labor done long. Time. So same with the, the, the Benson Timber and they're, they might have seasonal points where they're, they're low, but they're making that money back because they're working during those down times generate revenue during a good time and that's what a seasonal or a full-time person is going to do and my point was like i'm already looking for like this energetic rock star but how do i approach somebody who i think is an energetic rock star and say well Would you, you be interested in, in being a manager look, yeah, but, but, but i was going to say you look <laughs> yeah. in the mirror every morning don't you yeah <laughs> Right. <laughs> I ain't doing it for Here's your level. Well, you, no, you're saying, no, one, <laughs> no one's going to ask. Whoever it is, no one's going to be paid enough to do it. I mean, I think the city's made overtures in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, in hiring someone similar to that at a reduced salary, and they've had interest, but because it's seasonal, that, that was that's, away. They, they wouldn't no, do it. That, right? yeah, that was if, if they would have offered full time employment, they would have had one or two people that would have taken the job, but because it was seasonal, they wouldn't do it. It's too much of a risk. That's right. We had two very good candidates when we formed the clubhouse manager position, but because it was a seasonal position, they both backed out. I mean, it's, it's a bad... So you did fine. I'm sure. We did. Okay. There's people we out did. there. Our personnel committee worked very hard, and we had about nine applicants, and we narrowed it down to the top two. And I offered the first one and they backed out. And then the second one gave it a long consideration, but had the same 
the same response to it. Common country in Bemidji has a full-time person down there. They're right. working year-round. That's yeah. not just there for seven months out of the year. They're there 12 months out of the year. And like Kurt said, it's going to take time. It's a we, we're not going to expect somebody to <clears throat> walk right in that door. You know, they're going to be plenty busy trying to get back what was lost. I mean, we already have a campground that isn't open all the time, similar. But we have staff that are working to make it an entity that's worth visiting all year round, whether it's support staff or Mike or myself. Everybody's always working. I guarantee you the staff and the owners of Buena Vista are working right now to make their next snow, their snow season the best it can be. I think it's possible. I think it's a mistake if you don't do it. You, you have to have a fair time employee. I mean, you have to have a manager. You have to have somebody that's on hold. So, if I may, Max, we do have another yes. personnel committee meeting this Wednesday. Wednesday. And I think that that's going to be one of the conversations that that committee really needs to circle back to. Okay. At least that's my input. I know that. I'm only one of one person on the committee, but it's just all the feedback that's been coming through in the last month and the other cities that I've talked to, that's, that's how they sell it. I mean, yeah, there's other cities that have golf courses and they have, um, you know, management, management companies that actually manage it for them. And the city puts in a certain amount of money every year to help the course, but that's how Boston runs. They have an association. That runs that course for them. Really? Yeah. So city a dollar, owned. dollar a day, a dollar a whole after the day or whatever it's called. My friend that's the administrator there so she informed me that the city puts X amount of dollars into the course for improvements every year in their budget. She puts that back to them and they in turn accept that as a donation and they work and do on that course so that that city um, entity can continue. So it is a possibility to even find a management company to do it. I mean, that's been a conversation too, but I'm just not thinking that's where we need to go. I'm sorry to keep bringing this up. I know everybody wants to come home, but if, if you brought this to the personnel committee next week, then you're specifically only going to talk about the golf course management position or whatever. But what about restructuring the whole thing if you're going to do a whole parks and rec thing? And I know I brought this up at the crazy meeting before I was even on the golf board. Um, <laughs> But what about like making that more like you're going to restructure? What about considering restructuring the whole thing so that they were taking reservations for the park and all of that and having one staff in charge of both and making that your corner hub down there? If you, if you solve only the one problem at your personal page, you're still really, you guys, no offense, this is a parks meeting, but you guys really don't promote Pine Tree Park either. That's probably a whole other conversation that needs to be had because that's not advertised either and you guys are missing some. I mean, you guys are missing the mark on that too. So I think, I think it should be considered if it's going to be park and rec with the golf course. It should be possibly that one person should maybe even take control of taking reservations. That's park. been talked about, and that's, know, that's, that's a very good thing. We're going to have to justify a full time position. Yeah, we have to yeah. keep yeah. busy. Yeah, there is a you know, house there. Because they're open on the weekends and the city hall is not open here. Right. Um, and that clubhouse could be used in the winter? Is it mm -hmm. is it winterized? They can yeah. use oh, my there. birthday party in November there. Mm -hmm. Have birthday parties there, promote, you know, we did a painting yeah. party there. You can promote different things to host within that clubhouse year round. Yeah. No shoes, cross country ski rentals. Another thing I wanted to bring up tonight was your your pine tree park. Um, no question, it's in disarray out there. You're talking about a new RV park. Nobody knows any numbers. They don't know how many wells it's going to take. They don't know how many sewers it's going to take. They don't know where they're going to get money to improve the driveway. They don't know who's going to clean the trees out, but they don't know who's going to stump it. They don't know blah 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 blah. blah. And you have a park that's beautiful. It really is nice. Uh, quite an asset to the community. I just drove out there before our meeting and walked through it. I wouldn't shower in there, period. I go plenty of places camping. 
I encourage you to go down to Akeley, look at their city park. Beautiful. You can take a shower in there all day. It's clean, it's nice, it's not full of spiders and cobwebs and garbage, and it has running water in the toilet. You can get a little button there and it flushes. Works good. It's nice. We go out here and it's not so nice. You're talking about building something new, but you're not taking care of what you have. You've got a hell of an opportunity out there, and I look back in the books, I rented out a pine tree park for years. We drove a whole two and a half miles out there to camp. Couldn't take a shower there. I get up in the morning, my wife and I get up, she jumps in the shower in the motorhome, and I go down to the shower house and take a shower at the same time. We're done at the same time. I wouldn't shower down there, some hell or high water. You've got an opportunity down there that doesn't take a lot of money. Fix up what you have, put a sewer out there, put those little things out there where you hit that button and then the boats go down. Make one of those work out there. You, you don't have any idea what this new one's going to cost. I can promise you it's going to cost an enormous amount of money. I was just instrumental in building the one I will this spring. I know what that kid has into it. Your splash thing would be cheaper. Trust me. Use what you have, improve what you have, and try not to recreate the wheel. Because the truth of the matter is, is Mike's busy. He's got enough irons in the fire. And I think he's doing a hell of a job, by the way, Mike. That's not, that's, that's, that wasn't being a negative earlier. My point being, take what you have and clean it up. And try to run it a little better, a little more efficient. And forget about some of the new stuff. Because, yeah, everybody likes new stuff. Take what you have, fix it, and make it work. And you'll be surprised what your reservations are going to change it. A lot of people that used to stay at, at Pine Tree Park won't come in. And I know why. Go down and look at that building, that's why. And that's not that's not 100 percent my fault. You guys haven't put any in, you got to keep putting money in. And put a sewer out there. Put some toilets in there to flush. Put a shower in there that you're not embarrassed. I think we're on the right track with Pine Tree Park. I mean, there are improvements are being made. But before you get the cart way out in front of that horse with something new all across the street, when you can't take care of what you have, it folds. Yep. It don't work. We were out. Me and Max were out about that on the other day. They're better. Oh, I'm no. not saying that. I, first time I, was I still wouldn't shower here. I would like shower here. Oh. Not a place for me. Oh, I used to look at them. Yeah, I look at them, but I sure would take my bridges off in there. <laughs> well, Depends on how bad I stink, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go jump in the lake. Uh, no. okay. <laughs> so, does the board need to have more conversation about forming a parks and rec department with the center and sale? I, on, on which level? Are Everything. You, I mean, from see, I think it should just, I think it should be an item on our next agenda, okay. on our next meeting, okay. and this should be voted on. This is me. Okay. We should be moving. What about moving the golf course or the golf course from a enterprise to a special event? You guys all agreed on that? Yes, that should be. Okay. That should we'll be have some actual goals. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you move it to this special fund, does that allow you to apply for more grants? Uh, or does it prohibit you from applying? Right now, it, I don't know if it. I don't know if it benefits it anymore in a grant standpoint, like from the research that I got and just recently. Um, I think it would help if the city had a long-term plan for including it in this parks and rec department, because then- It doesn't appear that that's being pursued at all on, on multiple levels in the state. Right. And as far as for funding for no. any type of a project period, that whether it's- Not on a large scale, no. A few years back, I tried to submit our um, our campground and our biking trail as a um, point of designation for the state's legacy park grant program because you need to be designated first before you can even ask for money. And they turned us down back then. And the one piece of feedback I got back then was you need to, you know, think of it bigger. 
So yeah, this could be that larger <coughs> percent putting all of those entities together. Along with the Designation as a, as a point. Valid point. Valid point. So, I mean, yes, that's a long term plan. Yeah, I mean, it's. But Misty's idea of utilizing the clubhouse as a form of hub could definitely make that flow a lot better on a grant standpoint, too. And that would be part of your personnel. I mean, that could be something that you could incorporate into your. I feel like if you do a personnel committee, then it gets closed off. And yeah. can... I don't think it's a personnel decision. I think then the only it's thing. Is part of the job description? Or do we put that in there? Is it a. Is it a... Is it a... Is it a... Yeah. All first. Possibly a rental area. I see it as two different things. So maybe I'm not on the same page as you. Forming a parks and rec department is one thing, staffing the golf course is another. Yeah. Am I, I mean, am I, am no, I off base no, here? No, no. I'm just wondering how it's going to look. Because the parks and rec department are going to, is going to be run completely. And I don't, I, right now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking a parks and rec manager is not the person that's going to run the golf course. Maybe it could. Isn't that what your example was? They don't run the park, they only run the golf course. Okay. If you look all the way on the left side of the organizational chart, you see the parks. Oh, okay. Well, higher than this building right here. Yes. Age pretty busy. Need a little bit more action there. Yeah. The amount of reservations that we take this summer has been a huge increase from last year, in my experience. But if you were going to put, if you went you back to the hub thing, away. then you would have, you wouldn't want to have two separate things yeah. like that because now, I mean, that's only if you run with the idea. I know. Yeah. Then you are going to be making reservations at the golf course. So the person who's running the golf course, which is probably going to be your manager, because she's going to be married to it, he's going to be married to it, they're going to be the ones who are making reservations. So, in my opinion, I would say it should be just throwing this out there. It should be all one. Okay. Just an opinion. That's kind of wild. That's what I thought. Okay. I can see it that way. Otherwise, you can have two conflicting things again and mm -hmm. no communication again. But is that person going to have enough time to really put all their money and time into the golf course and the other entities? Yes. That's my question. Is, 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 will they really do it? Would you have time, there? extra time, when you're sitting down there and make reservations and things like that? I've never worked down there. At times. Oh, I mean, but people could call, leave a message, they, they, and call them back. They can, except I had somebody call while I was on another line this morning and I couldn't get back to them. So then she said she ended up calling me here. Because I, I did get back to her eventually and I said, you know, I, you called while I was on line with someone else. And she said, oh, it's all right. I called City Hall. I got to take care of it. But, um, there are moments and then there aren't moments. Yeah. I mean, I there have been mornings when I get there and I am hanging <coughs> out to get golf carts out because I have people standing there waiting to go out on the course. And today was crazy. We had carts out on the course and then it started thundering and lightning. And then we had people coming in that had planned to golf. And so then they postponed their golf thing a couple hours, um, giving out rain checks and stuff. So I I ran a lot today. Thank you. And and it's fun. Have a good time. But <laughs> yeah. So anyway. But maybe then there is. 
Well, like any job, it's going to have its moments. But you know, <laughs> you're going to have more than one person working too. It, yeah, and you're not there, be out there by yourself. There, there have been times when I've I've had the um, the guys go get parts off on it. You know, yeah, I mean, they help out when it's when sure. it's a busy day. If you're if you're not going to. You know, say say we talk about food, right? We did talk about food, right? All the time. Yep. Yep. Well, you're not going to be out there by yourself. Yeah. And people come out to golf and they want a cheeseburger or, you know, just for say, yep. you're going to have somebody else there working. At some point, we need to stop the focus of looking at it as small. We got to focus the, and think about what the possibilities could be. blinders off. Because you're not going to only have one person in the clubhouse up. Yeah, like we do now. If this, if it continues to grow its business, it's just impossible. Well, yeah. You're going to start continuing to have disappointments with customers that aren't going to be able to get their phone call done or their tea time, or right. going to end up staffing more. So it's 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 a whole slew of conversations. Our phones updated out there now. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. all we're yes. not yeah. Okay. Yep. We don't have. So, we didn't have a weather radar today, though. So I did not know if it was going to go. Open up on us because we don't have. They they took the cable <coughs> off the TV. Yeah, uh, working on so, getting them a, so another television. Now we don't have it. internet. Yeah, turn radio on. We have a part time at work on radio. We do, and I don't know the last time that we can. We need ten minutes. We need that the committee that needs to hash all this out or combine with the golf board. Either the two of them need it. I don't know. I'm just trying to think about that. Even though two committees need to get together and make counsel with an idea with. I mean, I'm just throwing things out there. Yeah. Otherwise, it's never going to get narrowed down between the agenda for the next six months. Well, please give up now. Any other items? Any other items? Any so we're done with the classification part? Yeah. Okay. The uh, grant for the next story. Oh, the downtown revitalization or redevelopment program. Okay, so thirty-two million. Uh, the city, after tomorrow night, from the county commissioners' meeting, will have full possession of thirty-two million without any federal or tax state taxes. Finally, its redemption period expired on July thirteenth. This. IRS and the Department of Revenue did not call for that. So the city was um, able to acquire the property for what was its market value and a couple of huge fees. So that was submitted on Friday to Joey in you know, County, and it was on the consent agenda for the commissioners to um, vote on. 40 and 48 Main, obviously, that you know, um, has been waiting on 32 May uh, to make sure that the uh, acquisition can happen. It now can start. So I've initiated the acquisition of the development court, filing the paperwork with Southie Title so that the acquisition of those two parcels can start as well. Because as you know, we can't really start a demolition until the acquisition is done. Um, Simultaneously, because of the requirements of the grant loan agreement with deed, the city needs to have um, needs to bond for the money, even though it's a grant. So I had a meeting with Mary Ipple of Tap Law, who's our bond counsel, Taylor's um, sort of financial experts, and then the gentleman that's in charge of the brownfield redevelopment project at deed on Friday morning. And we're all working simultaneously together to get that uh, bonding paperwork done. The city has to evade some properties, some tax properties, in order to do the bonding, regardless of the city um, self funding <coughs> the loan until it turns into a grant loan combination. So, um, are, are we going to use the same buildings as we did for the last? No, you can't. You can't? Okay. Oh, um, so I'll be identifying those, um, hopefully those properties with the county's um, help later on this week. But the city will 
on August in the August night's meeting be calling for a public hearing to abate that property to bond for this. And I know that sounds like we're taking another loan out, but it's the grant is there for that 164,000. It's just a formality of the of the program. Um, and then you'll call a public hearing for September 7th for those properties. So if I heard you correctly, Christina, at the 164,000, the city's not paying a cent out of pocket for it. It's coming all all 100% to the grant. I didn't say that. Okay. Right. So what's the um, the amount that the city's going to have to uh, pay on it for the property? Uh, I'm going to get to that. All right. If you could give me a moment to finish. No worries. Thank you. Um. One of the requirements of the loan agreement is that uh, the bond council has to um, identify the properties as substandard. So since WITSES has been working on the deconstruction um, plans for the demolition, I requested Steve Munoz's uh, form a report to submit to bond council so that they know that the properties are substandard. And that is a requirement of the loan agreement. Um, I have requested a subcommittee of a couple of BDC members and some staff, including a contractor, to get this project rolling because there's elements to this project I'm not going to be able to do on my own. Um, getting back to Jason's question, there is a time limit for the repayment or a timeline for the repayment of the grant loan. As you know, 50% of this awarded grant. <coughs> Um, is forgiven after two years and the other half becomes a loan. So the loan um, documents and agreements are being worked on right now between DEED and the AFO, and I'll have more information on what that schedule looks like. Um, at any point during the course of that loan schedule, we find a developer that wishes to purchase the property and develop it, which we're talking with financial experts about making it into a TIF project. Um, then if the loan is paid, off, paid back early, then the city is obviously clear of that debt. Does that answer your question, Jason? Yeah, I'm just, yes, it does. I'm just trying to figure out what uh, works what uh, amount of money that the city has set aside for this, pro or this project, answering that question. Um, my estimates of the first payments for the loan from Deed would not start until February 2024, and I'll have more information after the demolition. It's just, it's another element of the process of this program. Anybody have any questions? No, I've heard it a few different times now. Steph has a question. I, I just, what is it? I'm obviously late to the game. Okay, so Sorry. I don't know. I just, so it's, it's it, it, in some cases, Steph is called a Brownsville project, in other portions, it's called a redevelopment loan or grant program. The city and the development corps have been working since. A long, a long time mm -hmm. to acquire three properties in in downtown that need to be removed so that they can be redeveloped. That's you're basically you're just demolishing those buildings. That's the very such a disrepair. Correct. That it that it's yeah. yeah. So what's going to happen on the front of the theater then? Um, that's one of the elements I'm working with the contractor right now. The front of the, the front of the building can actually remain, but the awning is attached. All the way across. So a portion of this project um, timeline, the subcommittee is going to have to meet with both the owner of the theater and Anderson Fabrics to impart some of the details of the uh, deconstruction uh, deconstruction plans because it's kind of tied together in a way. That's what I was yeah. So there's some there's some foundation <laughs> things and some. Uh, roof things that will be discussed, and I've already had preliminary conversations with the contractor about that. That's on the
Kurt, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. <laughs> Hello, Kurt. Hi. Okay. Um, so when we had our last uh, work session, Max, we had a long conversation. I brought some notes back from Kurt. Um, he's the director of the HRA in Detroit Lakes, and Kurt um, volunteered to be um, kind of a mentor to our city to reestablish our HRA. Um, I went through a few of the high points that Kurt um, recommended I discuss with you. And one of the points that um, the council wanted to uh, know was, what is that levy amount that the city will do? Now, I do believe I emailed it to you, but just so I have it on, um, on the meeting for the record, um, it's 0.0185% of the previous year's estimated market value of all property in the city. Um, in 2020, that number was $33,494,300. So if my math is right, that levy amount is $6,196. So approximately $6,000. Right, not not a ton. No, but as we discussed the last meeting, it's going to take a little while before the city builds up any usable dollars to contribute. But it's really imperative that the city consider. And what about property that the city owns now, currently under the Black Tech HR? What about it? Do we? I mean, how much is there? Uh, I didn't look into that. Is that something you wanted me to do? <laughs> I, yeah. I, we we have funds. Is that what you're asking? How much funds we have? In no, the I'm, not asking, I'm not asking about funds. I'm asking okay. about our, currently how much property assets do, do they have? I mean, when we started or when they stopped, did mm -hmm. they own property? My understanding that there is, but I would have to look into it. I can't regurgitate that information to you at this time. Oh. All right. It's not like, you know, yeah, it was an encyclopedia. 10 years ago, <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. Okay, I'll look into that. But I'm just curious, that's all. Okay. Uh, Kurt? Yeah. Um, Kurt? <laughs> um, I guess my biggest thing of having you here is to obviously meet the city council and then if they have any questions from what you and I discussed, maybe we can handle those or, you know, maybe you could just go through what Detroit Lakes does and um, that might spark some conversation. Sure, either either way works for me. I'm happy to take questions or whichever whichever way you guys want to take it. Okay. Curious to know what they do personally, you know. Yeah. I'm curious to know what Detroit Lakes does. So currently okay. the um, city of Detroit Lakes has kind of two vehicles um, set up within the city. They have the HRA, which I run, which administers the HUD public housing program and the housing choice voucher program. And then they also have uh, what they call an economic development council or committee. And that entity um, pretty much concentrates on economic development. So businesses and, and bringing more commerce and increasing the tax base of the community where the HRA concentrates more on housing and housing related things. Okay. Well, 
not like our, not like the BBC does here or? Well, the BBC is a, a separate, a separate animal. I mean, they work independently of the city. And that's what? An EDA is something that is, is, is government use. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the economic development, um, or what they call the EDC, it's, it's an entity of the city and it's uh, staffed by uh, the community development director. And then they have um, commissioners that are appointed by the council and the mayor, uh, very similar to the way uh, my board is constituted. the HRA go about is, is there grants available for HRAs from the state or is it a well so we only uh, have based funding uh there are, when you when you say are there grants available to HRAs there are entities like deed and Minnesota housing and others that will either make grants or loans or other financing mechanisms available to HRAs but it's not, uh, it's not sort of an entitlement grant. It's not like you get a pro rata share given to you to do with however you please, right? It's, it's almost always competitive. Um, they'll put out an RFP or they'll, they'll announce that they have funding for a particular program and entities like the city or the HRA or the EDA, whichever are invited to make an application and compete for those funds. Um, so we get uh, how we fund our operations here. Uh, we don't currently have a levy for the HRA. We do have a request in front of the city council uh, to be considered in August with the budget to, to institute an HRA levy again. We've had one in the past, but it's been probably 10 years or so. Um, but we get uh, funding from kind of three streams. We get rent from the apartments that we own and manage we get an operating subsidy directly from HUD. And then we get um, the money for the vouchers also comes directly from HUD. And that's all on a formula basis. Now, I don't think the HRA of Black Duck ever owned pub or operated public housing or had housing choice vouchers. So you guys probably um, never had those things. But what we're looking to do in Detroit Lakes with, with the levy should the council give it to us is we have a lot of older housing stock that's still being lived in. I mean, it's still viable, but um, it's in need of some repairs, right? Um, every council member in, has uh, several properties in their uh, wards that um, you know could use a roof, uh, could probably uh, sometimes use a new furnace or HVAC system. They might need foundation work. Um, the, the idea is we want to try and and stabilize and keep that older affordable housing stock viable. We don't want to see it become so dilapidated that it's no longer habitable because it's just cost prohibitive to replace housing units today. I mean, a starter home today is $200,000 if you can find somebody to build it. And if you can save a $125,000 house by putting a new roof on it, that to us makes sense. So we've made that pitch to the council and we'll see how we fare. Of course, it, it all sounds great up until the time the budget numbers become real and then you have to make some hard choices. But uh, the, the, that's the request we have in front of our council uh, coming up. And you're doing, you do that uh, during your budgeting um, process for the following year, correct? Yeah, yeah. So um, in, yeah, in Detroit Lakes, the council will um, really start working on their budget uh, through a series of meetings in August. Yep. And that's where, you know, all the requests and all the needs uh, kind of come down and it gets, you know, right down to the nitty gritty. Uh, it, it sounds great until uh, you have to look at the overall cost of these things and, and, you know, the elected officials make some tough choices sometimes, right? I mean, yes, we want to do this, but there's a higher priority. Or we've been talking about this in the case of Detroit Lakes, we've been talking about this for eight or nine years. Are we finally going to do it or are we not? Okay. So the, you said the city of Detroit Lakes has never levied for it? 
No, they have in the past. Uh, historic, so our HRA has been around for maybe 50 years. And in the past, uh, they routinely received a levy. And so uh, prior to me uh, being here, they did things like they uh, paired with the high school and the community college here, and they did student built housing. So they contract with the building trades classes and they build a house a year. Um, they've done things like first time home buyer loans. Um, uh, you know, in the past, they did a number of different things. But um, over time, I think as, as the opportunities kind of um, became fewer and far between, the levy uh, went unused for a number of years. And I think the council just said, well, you know, come back to us at some point when you have another idea that you think is worthy. Uh, and, and to be fair, right, we went through a retirement and, and a couple of directors before me so there hadn't been a lot of organized uh, activity in that area for a while. And with us just, you know, kind of stumbling into it. <laughs> you know, we don't know how much has been. Yeah, I, see. I really like the idea of the building trades. Yeah. yeah we have great building trades in our but, school. Yeah. The, well, the beauty of, of locally levied funds, right, is there are, they're, they're really the only strings that are on it are what you guys attach to it. So uh, the, the problem with other people's money, which is great, but there's always a string attached, right? They always want to see something achieved. So you're always trying to make their money fit your need. And sometimes it's a perfect fit. And sometimes it's just not. And you end up doing a lot of extra stuff or there's a lot of extra hurdles to go through before they'll give you their money. And you know, we tried a small cities development uh, grant through deed to do some home repair. But if A, you've got to prove the need, uh, which means getting homeowners to return a survey, which nobody returns surveys anymore, right? Uh, and then if you do that, then you have to do all this letter data before you can do the thing you want to do. So you use up all your money abating lead in a house that probably doesn't have little kids in it anymore. And, and so the idea behind our request is local money, local rules, local need, right? Uh, the people closest to the need know the best what needs to be done. And you know we want to do a roof or a foundation. We don't want to mitigate all the lead-based paint in the house, and we don't want to uh, do all the radon mitigation and all that stuff. Not that that's bad. But you can spend thirty or forty thousand dollars on a house to do that, and you still haven't fixed the foundation or the roof. So, you know, th there are opportunities to pursue. Um, I call it other people's money, um, but you have to know what you want to do, and then you have to go and find the this organization or the entity that has the money that also wants to do what you want to do, because if you just sort of chase opportunities. You know, you go to a meeting and you hear the folks in Crookston got money to do this. Gosh, we want to do that here. Well, you just end up chasing your tail, right? If you don't have a priority and you don't go after money to do exactly what you want to do, then, then you're really spinning your wheels. So if you guys did a levy and, and uh, you know, raised $6,000 a year, what that does is give you some seed money to... Um, to go to a conference or to uh, attend a training and learn more about what's out there and what's available. And then you bring that information back to the community. And uh, you know, as you do that, you then start to, to focus on, okay, this is the pot of money we wanna go after. And so let's start getting our ducks in a row so that we can put in a good competitive application. There's, um, I, you know, many of the HRAs in Minnesota belong to something called NARO. National Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials. And Minnesota has a chapter and they do two conferences and they have a conference in Duluth coming up, uh, I think the first or second week of September. And one of the sessions I saw, I thought of you guys, was um, uh, it's development for small communities, right? And, and the thing is, the description says, there are many new tools and resources available for small communities to address the lack of affordable housing. 
Join us for this session to better understand what's available, how to utilize these resources, and learn about the creative ways HRAs across the state are developing affordable housing in their community. So it's, it's going to something like that, sitting in a room with other like-minded communities and hearing and learning and, and taking that information back to your community and saying, is this for us or isn't it? And, and uh, you know, once you kind of learn what it is, uh, who's got the money that's going to want to give it to you if you're competitive to do the things you want to do, then you can kind of focus your efforts and, and you know, see some, see some results for all of your efforts. I don't know what we, you guys did with Landon. Yeah. I have it all now. Yep. Exactly. So are you going to this conference? Can you go to the session for me and bring me back notes? <laughs> um, I am not going because I'll be on vacation, but um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't hurt to reach out. Um, I'm trying to think of a community in your area. Uh, you know, it's, so the session is put on by the Minnesota Housing Partnership. They're an outfit um, based in St. Paul, but their whole mission is to work with primarily greater Minnesota communities and help them kind of assemble the tool bag necessary to get affordable housing uh, um, activities done in those communities. So even if you can't go to the to the conference or attend the session, if you just reach out to Minnesota Housing Partnership and just say, gee, I know you're doing this session, I can attend. Would you be willing to share your PowerPoint with me or, or you know, that sort of thing? They're, they're very gracious and they're very helpful. Um, they have capacity building grants for HRAs. So if, if you say, yep, this is something we want to get going again in our community, and, but we just don't quite know the second step, um, you can often partner with Minnesota Housing Partnership and they'll give you what's called a technical assistance grant and it helps you build your capacity as a council and as an HRA to understand what's, what's out there, to understand what the implications are for your community and frankly to help um, garner local resources. They're a huge advocate for HRAs having local levies because it all starts with money. You know, you can have all the best intentions in the world, but if you don't have a checkbook to help make that happen, you're going to be really frustrated. Could you email me that information so I could share it with the board? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you can uh, you can go to the Minnesota NARA website and check out all of the uh, conference stuff. You know, a, a great first step might just be becoming a member. Of Minnesota NARA. I think it's $150 or $60 a year or something like that. It's a very nominal amount, but that gives you access to all of their materials. And that's just mnnahro.org. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And if you just if you just Google Minnesota Housing Partnership, bam, <laughs> their website is going to come up and contact info and all that too. Yep, just did it. <laughs> well, I, I really like this because he brought up one very valid point. So when the city was going through infrastructure changes on Summit in Maine and had the small cities development grant options to give to people that needed their housing improved upon with exactly the way Kurt said, they had to do a pre-app, a pre show the need so we could get the money and get the grant that helped offset the sewer system. Mm -hmm. And then in the long run, when it came to giving out all that money, we had 120 grand to give out, not a single application came in. Not a single one. Yep. If, if there are too many hurdles or too many barriers, people just- And that was they, it. They don't, they don't follow through, they're burned out, right? And no one wants one more survey or one more application or, why do they need to know how much I make or what I've got in the bank? Because none of their damn business, right? That's the attitude you get sometimes. And it's like, well, that's your choice. But when you use other people's money, you have to play with their rules. That's just the way it is. Valid. 
Fair enough. Do you guys have any questions for Kurt? No, I got enough reading right there. Okay. Uh, no, he very, very informative. Yeah, I mean, you. You're, you're in the same spot. Many, many, many communities have found themselves at some point or another, right? They know they want to do something, not quite sure what, but you know, you, you've got to sort of take that first step. And the first step is just educating yourself of what's out there, who's an ally, who can help, um, who can demystify some of this stuff, help you understand it. And, and NARO is a good, a good organization, uh, Minnesota Housing Partnerships, a good organization. Um, sometimes, you know, attending a conference, even if you can just go for the day, it's it's where you sit across the table from somebody who does something like you in another community, and you make those connections. Yeah, I see there's quite a few you know, webinars on the part, Housing Partnership website. Yeah, their, their their whole mission is to help communities increase the supply or, or maintain the supply of affordable housing. So I, I would definitely reach out and, and make contact with those folks and just tell them your story. Just we're, we're going to reactivate our HRA or we're thinking about it. You know, we're, we've bandied around this idea of a levy, uh, you know, because I, I believe they have an ongoing technical assistance grant pipeline. And if you're willing to put in the, the work, the time and meetings with them, they're willing to fund some capacity building, right? So that you as a group become more knowledgeable about what's out there and can make better decisions about which resource might fit your particular community's need because every community is different. Education and moving forward. Where, where we can go from here. Okay. Kurt, thank you for hanging out. You're welcome. Your time. You're welcome. Good luck. I mean, you're the you're on the right path because right, it all starts with being curious and it's like, what can we do and how do we do it? And this is where it begins. Right, exactly. Okay. All right. Good luck, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, I apologize, but I I think I burnt myself out on the old business, so I would like to know what is going on with our police department. I'm uh I'm very curious to know why there hasn't been any patrol cars out. There was one today. Yeah, there was one today. Mm -hmm. One. But um, a couple weeks ago when they were preaching at the park, and there was some loud motorcycle running up and down the road out to the lake and back and 100 miles an hour out of Summit Drive. There was no police officers working or a whole bunch of crazies running around town with all these loud exhausts and everything. There was no police department working. And you know, I'd like some accountability about this. So, well, yeah, we haven't heard nothing from the police department for all oh, <coughs> for a month, month and a half. It's, yeah, it's, it's been a while since Chase has attended. But no other officer has showed up. So they're not required to. 
to come to a meeting? Is that what you're requesting? Well, Jason, well, if I'm understanding Don correctly, he's asking for another officer to attend the meeting. If Jason's going to be um, available to come to the meeting, then the next in line should show up. You have two full time officers and one part time officer working right now. You do not have 24 hour, seven day a week coverage. I understand that. Okay. If one full time officer is not working, then we have. One full time officer and one part time officer. Right. So their role is not administrative, though. They they answer to us. Okay. And what are you asking? <clears throat> Where are they? I, I'm asking a oh, question. Well. What are you asking? <laughs> The other day, somebody was working, and the, their car was over there, and the police car sat in front of the police department for like six hours, did not move at all. Okay. Six hours. Okay. <clears throat> Tell me the day. I don't know what day you're talking about, too. I like some accountability. I would assume it would be one of the days that our full time officer was on duty. I can't remember. But okay. And when you're asking for accountability, what exactly are you asking? Well, for? if we're not getting any help from Beltrami County on our other vehicle in my house. Are you upset that uh, the police cruiser is sitting in one position and not mobile? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. So we need the patrol officer to actually patrol, is what you're asking. Well, I, I think we should have movement. That, that's the accountability you're asking for, Don? Well, I, I want to know why we don't have more other police officers moving around. Why is a vehicle sitting for so long? No, I mean there should there should be there should be more, you know. Just kind of frustrates. Um, and especially with when well, people, well, people are driving around this town going 100 miles an hour with loud exhaust, it's just it just it just it just blows my mind in. Don, Don is correct in the fact that. Jace should <clears throat> answer to the city council, or police chief should answer to the city council. But on a certain role, we, you know, we don't, I guess we're not looking for details. No. We're looking for perhaps, you know, our, our units responded to this many calls this month. Or, oh, I would love to do that again. <clears throat> some sort of something. You know, when we when we were sitting in a council meeting and you asked, does there anything new to report from the police department? Nope. Okay. You know, uh, some sort of accountability for the. You should tell us like how many tickets you wrote. Or, or, you get or, over. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, what has actually been you know, so in our city, not the county level, not the federal level, not the. the you know, and he did something. You know, there was some community policing done. He yeah, showed the kids at the school, you know, the squad car or, or something, you know, whatever. Some sort of well, when you see people, I'm taking calls. I was just gonna say that if we want to hear people driving by, you call or do you just let them get there? Well, you know, you have to call, otherwise, you can't be everywhere at one time. As Jace made it, uh, I guess I asked the same question about a year or so back. Uh, it's up to the citizens to make the phone call because if they don't make the phone call, then they have no idea what's going on. If they don't know what's going on, then they can't uh, respond with an officer to go sit on that spot to listen for that motorcycle at that specific time. You didn't have to, you could have been anywhere in town and heard that motorcycle. 
But motorcycles are allowed, whether they're going fast or not. No, not that motorcycle. I think it was loud. I'll say one thing on that. I've lived here since I was that big, and I watched these cops kind of going down here. Be careful what you wish for. I will tell you that 30 years ago, we had a bad rabbit in here, and there was about three of them in a row. And we're still trying to get rid of that stigma. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying, be careful what you wish for. Because Black for years has been a well, limb asshole there. And we don't want that. Because the, the three in a row that we had, that's part of the reason the town is right now. They chased everybody out of it. And they were beyond normal. That's, that's not what I'm I, asking. You know, I get, I get where you're at. You know, there's a caveat to it, too. <laughs> I, I, I've, asked, I've asked for them to patrol Summit Drive, Lake Drive, and, I, and it, well, we don't see anybody speeding. Well, but they pull, they leave Timberline, they're going 100 miles an hour by the time they hit uh, the daycare out there. I, uh, well, and <laughs> well, we're sitting down Industrial Boulevard. Well, of course, you're not going to see him speeding. I do believe Jace did um, I address that because I believe he put it on a blotter for his, uh, for, J, uh, for Andy and the sheriffs to actually patrol that. And, and if I'm not mistaken, Christina, didn't he say he did majority of his time over there? I had a day to I patrol that. every meeting. I haven't heard him say one word. He said it in council. And he figured that out way back then. You know? No, I had. No, I don't want to have a, I've had somebody had pulled everybody <laughs> over, but, and, and somebody sits in the bar, <laughs> and so many different, you know, that's not what I want. You're right. There is a fine line where should we have them enforce every law, or should we relax every law? I mean, that's why it's called officer discretion. We're a small town, so we have to start acting like a small town. I mean, we can't enforce every rule. Otherwise, like Kurt said, we'd be driving out everybody at the town. And if it is a major offense, the county jail is closed. Yeah, and that's the <laughs> too. It's, even no, I don't know about that. that. How do you know? <laughs> county, county wide, county wide, the sheriff's office is down there. I believe. Okay. So, provided this city does not have 24 hour, seven day a week coverage, provided we are uh, temporarily down one officer. I find it very hard to believe that we can focus our efforts only on our department as being the issue. The people have to act and they have to call and they have to ask because there's they this is a large county. It doesn't stop at Highway One. Does it? It does not. And how far west does it go, Tim? Hour. To your port, to the border, yeah, right, right? To, lower, to lower the lower travel line. line. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very large yeah. county. Oh, no, 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 it goes up to Port Town. Yeah. Port Town. It's all up Port Town. Go to Port Town. Yeah. yeah, right. That's only 100 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that you see us going down is no. it takes a citizen to make a phone call in order to get the help. And then bigger problems. Correct. It, it's, it's unfortunate, and I'm not trying to minimize your request done whatsoever. I do understand when there is a need. I'm li I live it every day. So I, I would ask that the citizens be patient and call a non-emergency number and ask for help and ask for someone to call. We should see at my house baseball games or softball games that stop time by my house. You might as well just take it down. Same thing with this one. Well, the speed bumps there should at least slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Total your car if you. You will do. Yeah. The non emergency number is at 835. I have it in my phone. No. 218 333 9111. Right. You know, regardless, regardless of the city's own department staff, you're looking at a 10 minute turnaround for a call, possibly longer. 
and possibly short, depending on where the it depends, are. and and it depends on the need too. And it's unfortunate, but you know, we are a very large county. Oh, I know. Yeah. I've lived here a long time in this county. Yeah. yeah. I have one thing. Uh, new business. I did receive uh, an email, text message, whatever you want to call it, from uh, Mary Larson. Mike, is this for you? Okay. They said that the street lights, the flood lights out at the, the park on the north end were not working. Didn't know if that was an us issue or is that a Beltrami electric issue? We would own those out there. The one by the pavilion was on this the just north recently, side. like I said, I've been gone for a she while. She stayed so. there this last weekend, okay. so yeah, my guess is it was probably out. Yeah, I'll check it out. North end, you said, correct? Good. Okay. Sure that one. <laughs> Who does that thing do now? Thank you, Misty. That is good, and it's <coughs> all labor. The materials donated minus the sand. Now I think I'm comfortable. You know the outhouse? Where's that building going? It's on the like the, the east side of the beach, way over to the woods on the trail. So the bump spot where the picnic table's at? Yes. No, on the beach down east side. Oh, it's gonna be on the it's gonna be on the, the way back side of the beach oh. in the parking lot. Oh, you'll okay. see it. You'll see the green tank out there if you go up there now. Sorry, I was thinking west side. Maybe big one of those drones for lake side Yeah, I know. That reminds me of my yellow bucket cap out there at some point where the building gets done so nobody rolls over in the car. Nope. Yeah. 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 Thank you, motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everyone, um, Very good. see you later. I just drove down. I didn't see uh, no lifeguard. Is that required? Signed?